<laughs> Why is it so sad? Uh, okay. So Lily's told us that... So you're going. She told us she's leaving. She's like that! She's leaving us! No! Why would she do this to us? How long have you known? I already know you were asked when you first went to Scotland about a month ago. Sometime. My frustration very nearly boils over. The fact that she's done this affects me more than it should. For her to be leaving, but not to have been actively hiding her own plans, but to have been actively hiding her own plans from me, after seeming for so long to be the one solid pillar of support and reliability I could depend on. It feels as if the foundation underneath me... Oh, yeah. It feels as if the foundation underneath me is suddenly shifting drastically. Well, it's an earthquake. Much faster than I can adapt to. Perhaps this isn't so much frustration as sheer unease. Lily. I'm sorry, I just... I wanted to think this through completely. I wasn't trying to take advantage of you. Please. No, it's too late now. It's too late. <laughs> I know, Lily. I know. It's just really sudden. I guess this means that once you go, we'll be breaking up? For one of the few times I've see seen since I met her, she generally lost for words. She doesn't look surprised. No doubt because the fact had dawned on her once she became sure of her decision. But rather, she appears genuinely unsure of how to deal with the situation now that's in front of her. <laughs> Long distance things don't work very well. Well, that's not true, actually. They're just hard. You just gotta make the effort. I never really tried one, to be honest with you. You gotta make it. Well, that's not true. It was in uni as well. I was seeing someone back home for a while and it was in uni. That. That that was that that was that is hard because you kind of want them there all the time, but they're not all there all the time. It's frustrating. I think it's frustrating more than anything. We 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 could try pursuing a long distance relationship. They're getting more and more common these days, after all. Even as she says it, the tone of her voice gives away that she doesn't truly believe what she's saying. Well, that is a hell of a long distance. Japan and Scotland. That's pretty long distance. I'm talking like a train ride. This is talking like a plane ride and a half. Like, <laughs> Lily is far too old fashioned. She's far too old fashioned to be able to cope with a relationship without any kind of physical presence. Because she needed to learn. And even I am to an extent. All we could ever be to each other would be a voice from the other side of the world. In the end, trying to rationalise everything is futile. Any attempts to try and connect what's happening with the future or past just seem to get more difficult the more I concentrate. These quiet moments when we just walk side by side, the precious time we spend with Hanako and Akira, the casual chat that we had during lunch times, the times we made love, the confessions of our feelings to each other, made love. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. I love you. No, I love you more. Oh my god, it's so cool. Ah. All pointless. All just a fleeting moment in our young lives. We were just two children pretending to be adults, aren't we? A long, long silence hangs in the air between us. The noise of the other patrons drinking, and Yuko standing there breathing heavily on my neck. <laughs> Talking only make the situation feel more strange and disconnected. Lily's face remains low. My face looks very purple today. Her dejected expression clouding it. I'm sorry, Yasao. Simple apology and no more. She left entirely without any further response. She's left entirely without any further response or comment. For a long sigh, I gather what's left of my thoughts and ask the final question I have for her. 
When will you be going? I believe with Akira, so it'll be less than a week. The beginning of summer holidays? Just a little afterward, yeah. Her tone is unusually slow and steady, her apologetic and depressed mood all the more written to her face as she tries to hide it in her voice. In the end, I can't even keep the promise of going to Tanaba! 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 With her before she leaves. Tanaba! I look down, seeing my face reflected in the by now lukewarm cup of neglected tea sitting in front of me. I'm sure they made this scene before. I really thought I'd, I'd, really, I'd really thought I'd really thought I'd left this kind of expression behind. For a while, I just stare down into the still surface, trying to sort through my emotions to get at what course of action I should take, whether it be right now or in the future. But just as before, the effort is wasted. I glance up to see Lily gently sipping her cool tea without complaint. Her face drawn and shoulders slumped. She looks to be deep in thought too. A strangely cold atmosphere coming between us as we isolate ourselves to mull things over. Even as Lily's cup slowly empties, mine remains untouched. Oh, the emotions. It's a long time before I notice the rain dying down outside and the few other patrons of the Shanghai having left. Do, 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 sad music. This music is so sad it makes me want to cry. From my penis, I, I want to cry. From my penis, I, oh no, what will I cry? <laughs> it's Magic Moments by Milby, Volume 1. <laughs> it's featuring his hit single, I Want to Cry from My Penis Eye. <laughs> Also featuring Chocolate Starfish, the backdoor lover. <laughs> Nostrils. <laughs> also featuring Mouse, they're not just for breathing. The chill of the rapidly darkening evening permeates the dormitory hallways. While trudging down the corridors of my room, I see an unwelcome movement from up ahead. Oh, it's ke 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 kanji Kanji and chips. Sure enough, the opening of the door opposite mine heralds the arrival of a bespeckled Kenji. Hey man, what's... Whoa, dude, you look awful, I think. <laughs> you okay? He really has a knack for making any situation better. I... I don't really want to go into it. It's late. Go away, Kenji. Okay, it's cool. If you want to talk about it, I'm... I'm... You know, here. Wow. Well, I look at him for a moment before surrendering my stern front and awkwardly scratching the back of my neck, embarrassed by his standoffish response to him. Thanks, Kenji. It's cool. It's a friend of four, right? Whoa. What's going on here? Yeah, you're right. Um, see ya. I gotta go do something. Bye. That's weird. That's the nicest he's ever been in his life. I open the door to my own dorm room and close it behind me as he quickly waves me off. The solid fud the door makes against the door frame sounds out a final call for the life I've led since coming to Yamaku. I just stand in my darkened room, fruitlessly attempting to work out what I should do from this point onwards. Just what should I do? I don't know. I don't know! Oh, the feelings in my heart! They want to burst! As class ends, I simply rest my head on my hand and stare out the window to pass the time. It's been a few days since Lily told me her plans. I haven't been out. I haven't been to our ordinary lunchtime haunt since then. Not that there would be much point. Hanako has been busy with the newspaper club she's newly joined and has even begun talking in class with Naomi every now and then. Even Lily, aside from the fact that a meeting between us would have been awkward in any case, has been run off her feet with class representative duties as the summer holidays approach. And now they're just about here with the end of the today's bell and the summer holidays will have begun. I suppose that all I'll end up doing will be visiting my parents for the duration and lazing about my old home. That and now that my previous plans are entirely askew. Meanwhile, Akira and Lily will be en route to Scotland to live out the rest of their lives there. 
No matter how hard I try to rationalise the idea that once the summer holidays begin, my life will return to the way it was, simply refuses to happen. Should have picked someone else. Should have picked, uh, should have picked, uh, Bernie, old Bernie face. Uh, you know, <laughs> even mo everyone's moving on with their lives. Lily's rejoining her family. Akira's moving up in her father's business. Hanako's gaining new friends and hobbies. And even Yuko is moving ahead of her university aspirations. Don't shut up about Yuko. Even I'm moving forward in the end. With the marks I've gotten so far in Yamaku, much less after a, such a rocky beginning, the path to getting into teaching science as a career seems straightforward. I suppose I should at least be happy about that much, but it doesn't really seem to help. Hey, Tom! Oh my god! <laughs> I quickly stopped my ruminating and turned to face the bubbly voice beside me, putting on the most upbeat expression I could muster. As expected, Shizune stands flanking her. I have a sneaking suspicion they want something from me. My soul. Hey, Misha. Shizune. What's up? What's that? Is that there? Well, well. <laughs> oh my god. She and I were thinking. So we're just two poor girls. I need help with all the work I've been going to give before the house hired again. Sure, I can help. But here, tell me, really need. What? I think I broke Misha. <laughs> we need a what? <laughs> Even Shizne raises an eyebrow at her accomplice's shuddering, stops in her tracks. So you help us, you chan? I just said I would, didn't I? It's hardly like I have anything better to do. Maybe helping them with their work will help them to help take my mind off the situation. Misha seems genuinely ecstatic, ecstatic with my response, but Shizne's expression is clouded and difficult to read. I find myself quickly averting my eyes from her own, as it almost looks like a pity, a face of pity. No doubt, it must be just my imagination. She knows. She's actually going to help them, isn't she? This is hardly the first time I've been in the student council room. Indeed, I found myself down here often, even to help Lily with her class rep work, or to sort out one thing or another with the student council itself. Now, though, it's quite a different place. Papers are folded, and papers and folders are strewn across every table in the room. Only a solitary little black laptop atop a single desk sticking out from the mess. It looks positively ancient, and I'd guess it has been a valiantly serving its task in archiving information for years and years. So, what he's doing? This looks like a lot to do. Shizne's expression becomes determined as she signs. It's a worrying look. <laughs> oh god, no, please. Everything, hey, Tan. My Murray was well placed. Everything, you say? What's left on the desk is what needs to be done. It's all needs to be digitally recorded, which is what it helps us which which is what the laptop is for. And I'm guessing they'll be the one doing this. Tita said she saw you with the computer library a few days ago, and you seem really good at them. Good at computers? I can touch type, I guess, but it still seems like an overestimation of my skill. I can't touch type. I wish I could. I have to look like a. I'm like, I'm like, a, p, ah. What am I spelling? The upper, upper items. P o l p p. <laughs> I was just typing my ho up homework. Wait, Shizne was watching me do that? One must know their allies before they can know their enemies, of course. Wow, that's pretty w Wow, that's pretty bad. <laughs> For once, it's not very hard to work out who said that. Nonetheless, it doesn't seem worth fighting over. Sitting at a computer doing some typing hardly seems uh, on onerous. Onerous? Onerous? Fuck it, I don't know. As far as tasks to help Shizne and Misha go. Besides, it'll help to get mind off other things. Take my mind off things? Take my mind off what things? Misha's face goes blank as she translates this for Shizne. The latter's response is only to glance away towards the window after briefly signing. Misha's face quickly returns to a smile as she translates back. She was confused, I guess, but Shizne is harder to pin down. I would just think you might like help to get your mind off the exams, of course. Either way, we may as well get into it sooner rather than later. I'll go along with you. That's the spirit time! Yay! <laughs> Yay! 
And that's the fifth chef spread. Chef spread. Chef spread. And that's the fifth spreadsheet compiled and saved. And for next month, after a little bit of fussing around, we all managed to get a bit more organised. She's now been gathering up the loose sheets and, thankfully, sorting them into a neat pile next to me. Meanwhile, Misha's been handling the manual writing work, her girly pink pen leaving its unmistakable mark on paper after paper. Once I got myself into a rhythm, this really wasn't so bad. She's named Misha also seemed to be in the swing of things, wordlessly communicating as they go about their business with further. I periodically glance at the sheet beside the laptop, apparently a list of student names and matching addresses, as I dutifully enter the data written on it, I don't pay a lot of attention to what I'm typing in until I reach about midway down the page. Hakamishi, class 3-3. Free free. Huh. The family home is in Saitama. My idle curiosity has ended abruptly as free light taps can be heard rapping on the door. Misha quickly skips over to check who it is, tapping Shizne's shoulder on the way past to let her companion know what's happening. Ah, you're here! Hmm? Who is it? It's gonna be it's gonna be fucking Lily, isn't it? With a slight pause to enter Shizne's data into the file along with all the others, I look up to check who's at the door. Yep, 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 yep. Called it Lily. After giving a cursory nod to Misha in greeting, she perks her head up in her trademark manner. Is that his sound? Is that his sound? She's pretty darn good at working out my voice from the smallest of phrases nowadays. Yeah, it's me. Uh, hey. Hey. Ugh, I was going to try and pretend I wasn't here. The atmosphere feels slightly awkward as she bows. Neither of us know quite how int intimate we should be around each other, given she's leaving in just a matter of hours. This is a fact that, thankfully, neither the oblivious Misha nor the hard-working Shizne pick up on. So, you got work to do as well? Fortunately, I arrived as soon as I could, but my class held me up with a surprise farewell party, and I had to get changed. Why is she still doing work? She's leaving. It doesn't matter. I glance down at the laptop clock. It's pretty much the end of lunchtime, so I'm guessing Lily managed to wrangle the last period off as well. I take it Shizne is here as well? Of course! And I've been here doing our lunch, all of lunch as well! The last comment was really not needed. She's now baiting Lily into another argument. I can feel it. I'm sorry I can't be as hardworking as you, she's an I'll endeavour to hire more lackeys to do my work in the future, I assure you. Oh. And Lily just took the bait, escalating things further. Boom! Here we go. Here we go. Aren't you the one always outsourcing a work to classmates? The difference is they choose to help, unlike the, your tyrannical grip on your own class. Time really works! Even if we did things differently, we still got the same results, right? This is a school, not a police state. You'll have to remind me when you were appointed class monarch, I'm afraid. Oof. Boom. You have to seize power. It's not as good if you just hand it to you. But I guess you wouldn't really understand that, right? <laughs> You'll have to remind me when, mo when monarchs were elected into their positions. Lily positively bristles at this. She's nice two hit combo forces her onto the defense. you can touch the I was really loud. you can. Yet for all of your yet for all your vaunted power. You cannot get one person to help you without forcing him. But he's so full he's so volunteered. He's such a hard worker and he's doing this instead of meaning a socialized data, right? Is that so? So? Ah, this is bad. I really ended up between a rock and a hard place. As much as it pains me to do this, the truth was at least a chance of stopping this argument here and now. It's okay, Lily. They didn't harass me to cover anything. Lily gives me a disapproving grimace, silently radiating her strong feelings of displeasure in my general direction. <laughs> she can be quite scary when she wants to be. Though thankfully that isn't often. Hey Ten, you make the sound like it's a regular occurrence! Isn't it? It isn't? In the end, it doesn't matter so long as everything's getting done at a good pace. 
Let's just get this work over so we, with so we can go home. She's in a snorts derivously, derived derivatively, and gets back to marking off her sheets in front of her, while Lily sighs and finds her way along the room with her hand, following the filing cabinets lined along the wall. This would mark the only time I've managed to successfully defuse one of these situations, but the grudging ceasefire built around mutual fear and respect makes this feel more like the Cold War than a real piece. <laughs> I can't take all the credit though. Lily's leaving has surely affected Shizne to some extent, to make her give up so easily. Moments before getting back to work, I noticed Lily reaching up to grab something from a filing cabinet. I almost offered her help, but her height gives her ample ability to take it down safely. Once she sets the strangely shaped device on the desk beside me, I realise just what it is. Sort of. Sort of. And she takes the old green covering off and sits down. Typewriter. That's a weird looking typewriter. Is it a braille typewriter? At first, it seems to be an old metallic blue typewriter, but it doesn't take me long to realize it's far from ordinary. It has far fewer keys than expected, and those it has show no lettering printing on them. Only the shadows cast by the tiny braille dots that on them give me a hint to the thing's purpose. Blind typewriter? <laughs> Blind typewriter? Oh, this? Why are you not far off? It's normally a Perkins Brailler, but it's basically a typewriter for the blind, yeah. It presses Braille into pages rather than text, which is why it has fewer keys. Huh. It's really neat. She gives a lighthearted grin at my curiosity over it. I have to admit that it appeals to my sense of novelty. It certainly is novel. Without further ado, we each get back to our allotted tasks. The loud clunking of the mechanics in Lily's brailler, and the tapping of the laptop's old and weary keyboard quickly fill the room. It's a nice atmosphere, really. Everyone knows what they have to do, and Lily and I get to sit beside each other and exchange the odd word as we work away. Nostalgic, that's what it feels like. It's pleasant, but just slightly stained with the knowledge that our time together is nearing its end. You should have just had, like, excessive amounts of fun times before they left. Excuse me, Misha. Excuse me. It's probably addressed, he pro to properly address her, Misha bounces over from the filing cabinet she's peering into. In spite of Lily's lack of sight, for a moment, I think it's strange, but then realize it's exactly what I do. What's that? What's up? Could you ask Shishne where the attendance records for class 3 2 are? I think they'd be moving. Okie dokie! And with that, she filters off to Shizne, who's working at a table behind us. Lily's famili familiarity with the council room, and the efficiency of which she works, remind me that she, Misha, and Shizne used to work, used to all work together in the student council. They did. They were an evil group. A power-hungry mad group. Maybe this is fitting end for her stay in Yamaku, working her way just like she used to, surrounded by those she loves and at least liked. I look up, getting off guard by Shizne sorting through a drawer, rather than Misha. Taken off guard. Sure enough, she plucks out a manila folder, entirely blank save for the, the just barely visible bumps on its front, and holds it in front of Lily. Lily's hand fits over it to check what it is, her fingers feeling the odd, the, out the dots of braille, and confirming it's what she asked for. Thank you, Misha. No reply. No reply. That is, say for an odd grin, no, smile on Shizne's face. <laughs> That's a weird drawing. A couple of seconds pass before Lily clicks that it isn't Misha behind her, but Shizne. A momentary look of surprise is replaced by a slightly bashful smile. For a few moments, the room is all but still and silent. Eventually, though, Shizne strays back to her workstation, and Lily begins typing once again. It only lasted a handful of seconds in all, but it feels like years of communication were made up for in just one silent exchange. There. Finished. I lean my head back and rub my eyes to try and work away their weariness, staring at that small and rather poor screen's taken its toll. Excellent timing. Do anything left just to file these away and I'll have my workload finished as well. Good. I can pack up the brailer and put it away while you do that. Thank you, Hussau. Misha, are you and Shizne far from being done? I look around for the two as I replace the cover over the brailer, only to see them waiting at the door. I guess they must be waiting for us. 
with a minimum of wasted time, we file and pack up everything that remains and join them. Thanks for waiting, you two. We couldn't just take off without you and Hee-chan, you've been a great help! Without you, Hee-chan, not without you and Hee-chan. She just named nods approvingly, pleased with my efforts. I guess. It's the last class representative work done and over with, then. That's right. I miss you, Lily. I think it was fun working with you. Thank you, Misha. It's been good working with you. And Shizune. Shizune thinks for a moment before formulating her response. It's not that she often communicates without thinking. Quite the opposite. But this time it's even more considered than usual. Misha looks a little surprised before passing on the message. Shizune says, you better do your work over there the better than you did it here. Far from taking offence, Lily giggles into her hand. If that's the case, then please tell Shizne to give those still here a little more understanding in the future. Competitive until the last. Maybe Shizne and Lily aren't so different after all. She chance that should be checking to make sure you live up to your end of the promise. And that's how it'll be. I better be off then. Goodbye, Misha. Goodbye, Shizne. Goodbye, Misha. Miss Sam? Lily takes a hold of my arms and hers. Harms and hers. There being no need for a cane if I'm here to guide her. With a nod of farewell to the two, we set off out the door and make our way to the school grounds. As I turn to them, I notice Shizne's gaze lingering on Lily. They may annoy each other, but family bonds aren't easily broken. Got all your papers sorted then? Yeah, they've all been filled and handed in. Top of things as always, aren't you? She gives an earnest smile at the compliment, but it feels as if her happiness is just a veneer over the fact that she's fully aware of how much she's leaving behind. It reminds me of how she was like when I first how she was like when I first met her. Always smiling, always that a little bit aloof, always that little distant away from everybody. Even now she still maintains the air around many others. That air around many others. Especially those she's not close to. I'd hoped that our time together would have changed that fact. Our pace slows, the two of us coming to a halt in the all but empty school gardens. Hisao, is something for... Lily's words are cut, 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 a cut short, a cut short, as I turn and wrap my arms around her, pulling her tight. <laughs> I may not usually be given to such impulsive actions, but I just want to be close to her, even if it's the last time I'll be able to. All the other students have retreated to their dormitories and homes. Only the ruffling of leaves, ruffling, the ruffling, rustling, ruffling, the ruffling of leaves. Oh, I thought it'd be rustling, okay. The ruffling of leaves in the breeze making any sound whatsoever. As I draw back, I can see she has dropped her carefully maintained smile. Her hand hesitates, wanting to leave and neither to leave nor to stay on my features. She's putting up a brave show, but her slight trembling gives her away. Lily may be able to control herself well, but even she can't hold her composure together now. This is the woman I've come to love, but also the one who in all too short a time will leave the country forever. I'm sorry, Hassel. It's okay. you got your own life to lead, after all. Aww. We walk up the hallway in the girls' dormitory hand in hand, our emotions by now largely quelled. Nevertheless, our hands grip each other much more tightly than before. Faint muffled voices can be heard from Lily's room, the origins of which aren't difficult to guess. <laughs> the moment she opens the door, Hanako bursts through and wraps her arms around Lily, taking her very obviously by surprise. Lily, Lily! H Hanako? I'm gonna miss you, Lily. As expected, she's on the verge of tears. Lily gently rubs Hanako's hair with her hand in response, then pulls back and gives a warm, reassuring smile. Looking beyond Hanako, Akira can be seen getting up from the side of Lily's bed and scratching her head. Her eyes turn from Lily and Hanako to me, a stilted, weak smile hanging on her face. I try to return a more genuinely happy look, but the result is probably just the same. So, everything set? My adored back from killing Shizune? The common draws an amused giggle from his sister. Yeah, I've had it, I've everything in order, and yeah, I might as not to. Have you packed everything you need? Got the two bags right here, but there's still some stuff left at Hakamishi's home. I can pick that up while we wait this, there for tomorrow evening's flight, though. 
Kira gives the, la the two large black traveling bags on the floor a hearty pat. She probably came to help pack and make sure everything was in order of Lily's, uh, on Lily's end before going together with her. Oh yeah, how'd you pack when you're blind? <laughs> Lily, would, would you be okay over there? I'll be alright. I assure you, I'll have Akira looking after me as well. You know that she's reliable. But... Don't worry, Hanako. I have your phone number after all, so we can stay in touch. With Akira's help, I could send you things over the internet as well. <laughs> like what? <laughs> like what? I'll send you things. I'll send you links to cat videos I can hear. Hey, don't, don't, don't use me just because you won't learn how to use a computer. Hanako and Lily... Hanak Hanaku. Hanaku. Hanako and Lily both giggle briefly, the mood lightening ever so little. It goes for you too, though, so I promise. I'll contact you once I'm in Scotland. I know. I'll be looking forward to it. Her offer may be kind, but we both know that this is tantamount to breaking up. Neither of us has any illusions as to how well we'll manage a long-distance relationship. With nary, a, with nary a word of prompting, the four of us begin the long, solemn walk to the school gate. The numerous lamps scattered around the Yamaku grounds fail to do much more than provide pinpoints of light in an otherwise dense darkness. A car parked on the road just outside the school grounds comes into view, its shining black exterior reflecting in the dimly lit lamps of Yamaku. I call out to Akira in an effort to alleviate a bit uh, the heavy atmosphere. Is that your car? What kind is it? Don't know much about cars, do you? It's a Lancer Evo, solid and speedy. I do very dopey twat, you. Well, it's not as if her comment of my, on my knowledge is uh, off the mark. I never really taken an interest in them. She gives a small sigh. She's been good. Pretty after part of it tomorrow. Just like the summer house, you guys were the last to visit it before it changed hands. Turning back from my rather faulty attempt at small talk, I glance at Hanako and Lily following behind us. <laughs> it's got some good memories that summer house. Better clean it. I'll be clean. I hope they cleaned up. But by rights, Hanago should be leading Lily, which rather definitely the other way around as she clings tightly to Lily's arm. She's like a fucking growth. <laughs> it's a depressing sight. So, I guess this is it. Indeed. Although the time for everyone to say their farewells is now, nobody really wants to take the first step. It's as if the longer nobody speaks, the better the chances of them sim simply not leaving. Lily, do you really have to go? I'm sorry, Hanako. I won't be leaving you forever, though. I can still call you. Sal will still be here as well. I nod, but Hanako just clutches all the tighter to Lily's arm. After spending so long without anyone to call family, it must be excruciating to have to say goodbye to the one person that was close to a mother as anyone could have been in her life. Lily lets out a long, sad breath. All Akira and I can do, really, is stand by quietly on the sidelines since the only person that can solve this would be Lily herself. Eventually, Lily pulls her arm from Hanukkah's grip and holds both of her shoulders gently, a much more decisive way of address than I've ever seen Lily take with her. Hanako, remember when we first met? When you entered my room for the first time after overhearing my consoling of a friend who didn't, you didn't say a single word of the entire night. Even as I poured you tea and talked, you sat silently and simply listened to what I said. It took many quiet meetings like that before you began to open up to me. But as you began to, I felt some of the happiest moments I've ever felt. If I didn't, be I didn't become your friend because I pitied you, Hanako. I became your friend because I knew you were hiding, not just from me, but from everyone. Your ambitions, personality, interests, t that kind of sounds like your pain here. I didn't know any of them, and neither did anybody else. As you showed yourself to me, though, I began to realise the person that you were, and became sure that our meeting was a very special moment. But I... Lily cuts her words short as she brings her hand to Hanako's head and brushes her fringe to the side, gently pressing her lips to Hanako's forehead. Just slide it down a little bit, Hanako. No kiss. It's just, there you go. As she pulls her head with Hanako, so I was just like, yeah, there you go, nice. Akira, get it, get it, get it, no? Okay, never mind. As she pulls her head back, leaving Hanako all but speechless and her eyes moist, Lily beams a wide smile. I believe you are a very beautiful person, Hanako, and I'm certain that you will become a strong and confident woman. You're a very dear friend and someone whom I love very much. Just like a sow, I will never forget you as long as I live. 
I may be leaving, but you have your own life here to lead, just as I do. You have your own friends and hobbies and your own hopes after graduation. I want you to devote yourself to them, even after I'm not around anymore. That's why I think you'll be okay. Because you are your own self, with your own life. You also prove that to me. Hanako lowers her head in embarrassment, but nods as she does so. I, I, I understand. I know I have to say goodbye. I know you have to go your own way. But thank you, Lily, for everything. Oh, so emotional. <laughs> so emotional. Oh my god, I can feel... I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Hanako. We'll be okay. <laughs> thank you, Hanako. We'll be okay? There are a few seconds of silence before the answer comes. I will. Lily smiles, undoubtedly at least partly in relief. That makes me very happy then. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lily. And farewell to you too as, as well, Hassan. Goodbye. I'll miss you. She pauses for a moment before walking up to me, her right hand outstretched in front of her, takes a hold of my shoulder. Her left hand slowly and daintily reaches towards my face, taking my cheek in her palm, Akira and Hanako staring at us. <laughs> For a while, she simply holds my face, her fingers moving in to take in its contours. Usually her hand would be warm when doing such a thing, but the night's air has given it a skin, a cool edge. I'm not sure how long we stay like this. Her clouded eyes pointed just below my own as she wears a wistful, almost distant smile. Eventually, though, I take her cold hand in mine. It's difficult to do so. But with a slight sigh, I gently remove her hand from my cheek. I hope you have a long and happy life, Lily, no matter where you might go. Thank you. I'll make sure to. She takes a long, trembling breath before turning slightly towards Akira's direction. Akira? Okay. With a nod, she takes Lily's hand and begins to guide her to the car parked outside the gates. They both walk slowly and deliberately, as if their movements had been rehearsed in advance. It's strange to feel like this now, watching somebody leave Yamaku, the feeling of unease. The feeling of, of, of unease I have now reminds me of the first time I walked for those black raw iron gates that always looked far too pompous for what they were. As they leave, all of us know full well that our lives are irreversibly changing. I'd always told myself that I'd just have to take life as it comes, but everything's changing so fast, so suddenly. In the end, Lily's an irreplaceable part of the lives of both Hanako and I. The noise of Akira opening the passenger door for Lily brings me out of my thoughts, her hand waving back as Lily gets in. See you guys. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye, Hanako. Goodbye, Yasao. Hanako's hand quickly shoots up to her face. Her face brightened by her enthusiastic farewell. Goodbye, Lily. Goodbye. See you, Kiria. Goodbye, Lily. The door shuts. Oh, fucking hell, how many times did they say goodbye? The door shuts as well, uh, as we all put our best happy face for her well faces. Kira getting in the car herself and starting it up in short measure. Lily's hand can just be seen waving through the tinted windows, both of our hands waving high as well. Just as every other time I've done such things, I can't quite work out precisely why or Hanako, why I or Hanako waved to her given that she'd never see us doing so, but it doesn't matter. Even after that black shiny car goes down the hill and disappears into the dark night, we carry on waving and seeing Akira and Lily off. And then, they're gone. A strange stillness takes over our hands as our returns to our side as our hands return to our sides. I don't quite know what I should do or how I should feel. In the end, we just stand there silently, staring down at where the car disappeared from sight. Goodbye, Lily. All I can do in response is uh, to her quiet, mournful goodbye is to place a hand on her shoulder. She looks at me for a few moments before looking back down the hill, securing the nod as I'm still around for her. What we'll do from now on doesn't seem all that certain. We all have our own ambitions now, just as Lily said. But even so, it feels like there's a certain missing part in both our lives now. Something that can never be replaced. Oh god, that's not the end. Oh god, I thought it was the end then. I was, gonna, like, I was like, no, that can't be the end. But that's the end for now.
Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. That was that episode. That was a very sad episode. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, I've been Milby. This has been Kado Shoujo. Episode 114? I don't know. And I'll see you next time for what I think will probably be the last... Um, the last part of this, I guess. Yeah. See you then. <laughs>